Hello, and welcome back to another scary, scary edition of Ghost Stories Told from the South. I am your host, Stephen LaBooth, and I got some scary, scary stuff for you today, boys and girls. <laughs> all right, all right, all righty. We've got a good, scary show for you. Some more water stuff, but I'll save that. For later. But I hope you're uh, having a great week. I hope everything's going good for you. I hope uh, you had a great week at work and you're ready to wind down for the weekend and uh, maybe have some fun. We're just having some crappy cold cold front weather coming in, stirring up storms. Hot one minute and then uh, it's cold the next. So it's kind of funky down here in Texas. It's uh, getting funky like a monkey, if you know what I mean. But it'll be all right. Perfect spooky weather to light a little fire and tell tell some scary stories. I was going to try to do a uh, live broadcast tonight from my back, from my back porch, but excuse me, we uh, had some storms brewing off on, off and on around us, and I didn't want to record till in the morning. But I was like, well, I don't see anything around us. I'm going to go ahead and try to get it knocked out, so that way it's done, and y'all can have it fresh off the press. For Saturday. And once again, I want to say thank you to the numbers. They are booming really good, guys. Just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It's uh, it's doing great, and I appreciate it. And thank you, because it just means a lot to me. Because, like I've always said, I do everything on my own. I record it, do my own research, write my own format to write the show out and all that. I, I create everything. Then I got to edit everything before I put it on the uh, platform. And then if I do a video, I got to edit it too before I put it on the YouTube channel. So yeah, a lot goes into all this, but I enjoy doing it. I don't mind it at all and I don't get paid for it or nothing. It just makes me feel good how a little old guy from Minerals, Texas can be heard all around the world and people like my show. And it's just crazy, you know, I'm just a little bitty old town in Minerals, Texas. You have Minerals, Texas, you know, and uh, you guys are hearing me from Brazil to Germany to Russia to um, Australia, New Zealand, uh, South Africa. I mean, we're getting hurt everywhere. Canada, give a shout out to Canada, too. So it's all going great, guys. Just keep listening and keep downloading and keep uh, telling everybody and, you know, keep growing the numbers with me, guys. This has been a fun journey so far, and I love it, I love it, I love it, love it. <laughs> but anyways, <coughs> thank you guys very, very, very much. All right, now, we're still going to cover uh, stuff about water. So what I did, you know, I've been trying to find states. I was trying to look up stuff for South Carolina. Sorry if this episode is going to be a little short, but I found some stuff. for the uh, These places I'm going to talk about are on the coast of uh, South Carolina or some of these are by a uh, lake so no I'll take that back these are all on a I'm a retard need to read my notes better anyways these are all places that are haunted on Myrtle Beach in South Carolina I've never been been to Myrtle Beach I hear it's pretty so if anybody is uh, listening from there or from South Carolina Tell me all about it. I ain't ever been there. It looks pretty cool. But I hear they got pretty beaches. All these places that I'm going to talk about are haunted on the uh, Myrtle Beach up and down the coast. So uh, let's check it out. All right. The first place we're going to talk about. We're going from number 10 down all the way to number 1. The Strand Theater in Georgetown. These are all on South Carolina Myrtle Beach. It originally opened in 1941 as a movie theater. The historic Strand Theater in downtown Georgetown is now home to the Swamp Fox Fox Players, ghostly uh, occurrences that have been reported at the Strand Theater over the years include strange footsteps backstage, code spots, and unexplained voices. List listed on the uh, National Registration of Historical Places, the Strand Theater served as a filming location for the uh, for Made in Heaven 
1987 fantasy comedy film that starred Timothy Hutton and Kelly uh, McGill's. The uh, Strand's old time box uh, box office was built especially for the movie. That's pretty awesome. Okay, number nine, the Hampton Plantation in McLeanville, South Carolina, right there on Myrtle Beach. Now, both a state historic site and national historic landmark. The pre the pre Revolutionary War era Hampton Plantation, which encompasses a uh, Georgian style mansion and beautiful grounds along the banks of the Hampton Creek, gives South Carolina visitors a fa a fasting uh, glimpse of. Sorry about that. Kids came in and got the dogs stirred up. It was a, a glimpse of the of life on a colonial era uh, rice plantation established in 1735. The Hampton Plantation was last owned by Ar Archibald Red uh, Redledge from 1883 to 1973. South Carolina's first poet uh, li literature. And it all, uh, and it also widely known for its uh, reckless spirits, including a whippering ghost, often viewed in a rocking chair, that rocks itself on the front porch, as well as a myster as mysterious noises come from the master bedroom. Ew. Georgetown Lighthouse in Georgetown. Listed on the National Registration or Register of Historical Places, excuse me, that was rude, and located in the Tom uh, Yankee Wildlife Center Historical Preservation on North Island near the mouth of the Winnea Bay in the Georgetown Lighthouse is simply one of the most haunted lighthouses in South Carolina. The current lighthouse, which uh, 80 which stands 85 feet high and features 120 foot steps to the top. Top is the state's oldest active lighthouse and apparently home to several res restless spirits. Visitors to the lighthouse ha have reported to say hear the sounds of footsteps in the tower along with sightings of ghosts of a ghost named Anna or Annie. The daughter of the lighthouse keeper who drowned in the uh, surf many years ago. According to legend, Annie's ghost occasionally appears in the, on the uh, decks on nearby ships to warn sailors of, or to warn sailors of impending storms. Although the Georgetown Lighthouse is currently not open to the public, several Georgetown tour companies take visitors out to the North Island to see the haunted uh, light on North Island in Georgetown, South Carolina. Now we're going to go to the Colonial Cobbs, Tom, and Burtsville. Both, both ghost hunters and Revolutionary War buffs alike may want to take a road trip from the uh, Myrtle Beach way of way of the beat off the beaten path to Marble County to visit the alleged haunted tomb of the uh, Colonel Abigail uh, Abel, Abel Cold uh, born in 1750 and died in 1781. He was shot and buried alive along with the, his entire family by British loyalists during the um, during the American of uh, during the American Revolutionary uh, War. According uh, to local legend, vis visitors to the tomb at night occasionally hear the sound of someone uh, wandering through the woods, and some have even reported seeing the apparition of. The colonel himself, 
who served under the command of General Francis the Swamp Fox Maron, standing right next to them. Unfortunately, uh, the colonel's tomb has been the subject of vandalism over the years, so please take nothing but photos if you plan to pay your respects to the uh, Revolutionary War hero and troubled soul. All right, next we got the Old Gun Church in Georgetown. Established in 1729, Georgetown, South Carolina's third oldest city, which is located less than an, an hour south of Myrtle Beach, has uh, accumulated its fair share of ghostly legends over the years. One haunted history site, the uh, ruins of the Old Gun Church, which is which was completed in 1876 was alleged to be a a a, a, a generated institute of, par, of paranormal activity over the years according to legend Mr. Gunn the uh, gothic uh, the gothic style church contractor <clears throat> died after falling off the step uh, step roof as his restless spirit continues to haunt the church grounds to this day visitors to his haunted landmark on Pantersville Road have reported hearing screams and viewing strange lights emanating from the church tower so if you're ever around there Go check that place out for me. Tell me how it is. Now we're going to talk about the Gray Man in, on uh, Pele's Island. Or, yeah, Pele's, Pele's Island. One of, the most pop, one of the most popular South Carolina haunted legends is the uh, so-called Gray Man, who allegedly makes an occasional appearance on the beach to warn local residents of impending hurricanes other uh, and other major storms heading towards Paul Paulay's Island. Believe it or not, the first document sighting of the Gray Man dates back to 1822. And the most recent sighting happened just before Hurricane Florence hit the uh, East Coast in 2018. The Gray Man received national exposure when the Pele's Island legend was uh, highlighted in a 1990 episode of the TV show Unsolved Mysteries. Just a year after Hurricane Hugo hit the South Carolina coast, and more recently in 2014 on an episode of American Supernatural on the Weather Channel. So yeah, that sounds pretty cool. That sounds like a pretty cool place to visit. Go see the gray man. I ain't heard of I've heard of the gray man, but not about it warning people about, you know, bad stuff coming. <clears throat> All right, now we have the uh the uh the brewery on Myrtle Beach. A Myrtle Beach landmark this has been a Myrtle Beach landmark since nineteen forty four and billed as the eighth wonder of the world. The world famous brewer, brewery, which celebrated its 75th uh, anniversary in in February of 2019, is widely known for its great live music featuring uh, house bands, the house band, the Bounty Hunters, juicy burgers, ice cold beer, friendly atmosphere, and ghostly activity. According to legend, a man known as Barman Joe died suddenly as his at his bar stool but mir mira ugh, miraculously sprang to life soon thereafter just long enough to finish off his uh beer to this day bartenders report occasionally hearing barman joe singing near to the uh bar by the way country uh, by the way a country singer group, uh, Alabama, 
which was inducted into the uh, Country Music Hall of Fame in 2005, served as the house band at the uh, brewery for much of the 1970s at Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. <clears throat> so if you know that about the uh, band Alabama, they're a country band. They was real big in the 80s, early 90s. They was a good band. Now we got the Lucas Baylight in Conway. Local legend claims that the mysterious Lucas Baylight that can frequently be seen in the swamp of the uh, Gilbert Road in Conway emanates from the ghost of a Civil War era mother searching desperately for her lost child, who disappearing during a flash flood, of course. There's no historical evidence to back up this uh, story of popular belief, but Palamento State Urban Legend but that doesn't stop hoarders of thrill seekers <clears throat> of thrill seekers seekers from heading out in search of the origin of the Lucas Bear Light on a uh, nightly basis, especially uh, around Halloween. Neighborhood neighboring North Carolina has a similar mystery phenomenon that can be viewed off center overlooks along the uh, Blue Ridge Parkway called the Brown Mountain Lights. <clears throat> Brett, the Brettwood uh, Restaurant and Wine Brewery on Little River, considered the most haunted restaurant in South Carolina. The Brettwood Restaurant in Little River is uh, housed in the historic 19 Queen Annie style Easy May Mercuriously House uh, complete with a wrapped around porch of course and even offers a special ghost dinner and tour and and Papa D's, the uh, Bearwood Restaurant, was opened in 2007 by the uh, Stublik, uh, Stublik Brothers, brothers, who named it from where they uh, hailed from. Brentwood, Long, Long Island. Over the years, Brentwood employees have noticed strange occurrences in the uh, eateries, such as objects moving on their own, including wine glasses smashing to the floor, unexplained voices, and even ghostly apparitions sighted in the up in the upstairs windows. Or, oh, and by the way, the South Carolina Wine Bistro specializes in delicious French cuisine. So go check it out and have a scare. <laughs> All right. Our last one of the Myrtle Beach area. Sorry about that, guys. Didn't mean to bump my mic. The last place on the Myrtle, in the Myrtle Beach area we are covering. Let me get my screen back up. Come on. There you go. Is the Alice, Fl Alice Flag Grave All Saints. The All Saints is the Copular Church Cemetery on uh, Parkways Island. Few South Carolina ghost legends have more staying power than the strange tale of uh, Alice, Fra Alice Flagg, whose final resting place came to, came to be visited at the All Saints uh, Church Cemetery in Parkways Island, one of the oldest uh, summer resorts in the East Coast. According to the legend, the rest, 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 restless ghost of Alice roams the cemetery in a white dress. Here we go with white again. Why can't it be another color? <clears throat> Desperately searching for her lost engagement ring. Her father uh, disapproved of her wedding plans and reportedly reportedly threw the ring into the tr into a marsh in total disgust 
just to seek out the large flat tombstone under an oak tree and inscribed Alice. Excuse me. For those who wish to summon Alice, Alice's spirit, legend goes that you simply need to walk backwards around the grave 13 times while saying her name once, uh, her name out twice in addition several uh, visitors over the years have even felt a slight tugs on their wedding uh, ring as they approach alice's grave site by the way is literally bluffs will want you to know that the uh, notable poet and novelist james dick uh, dickley all right, well, that was pretty cool. I kind of like that one. I didn't mind that one at all at all. What we got here? That was... Okay, well, I'm going to take a quick break. We will be right back. You ever look up at the sky at night and look at the stars and wonder, are we the only ones really out here? wondered how much our government hides from us? Have you ever wondered why so many mysteries go unsolved? What really happens? What's the clues? What's the evidence? Ever wonder if Bigfoot or Mothman is real? Then, if so, come listen to this podcast called What's Really, really, out, really, really out There? And I am your host, Stephanie Booth. And, and I am my your co host, Stephen Booth, Hafaja. And if you're into UFOs, unsolved urban le- murders, unsolved mysteries, murders, mysteries uh, unexplained stuff that happened, urban legends, we're into all of that. Conspiracy stuff, too. We go dive into that. So if you're looking for a new podcast that tells that kind of stuff, then you uh, need to listen to what's, what's really, really out, out there. there. And we are on Spotify and iHeart and Pandora, I think. But we are pretty much on every platform. Mm-hmm. We have a YouTube channel, too, or channel. So go check that out. It's called What's Really Out There. So come check us out. Once again, I'm your co host, Stephen Booth. And I'm your host, Stephanie Booth. And this is What's, What's Really, really out, out There. We'll see you at the next episode, guys. All right, we're going to do our last story of the episode, the Black River Church on Black on Black River Church in South Carolina. The church, the church is one of the first brick churches built in the state and it was supposedly built around the built around 1846. The place has a dark feel to it. To some who have entered its gates, and sometimes you will even get a feeling of fear rush over you. From the church's Greek uh, revealing architect, its solid columns standing tall, its brick walls scaling over you, the cemetery's mossy atmosphere full of trees and thick brush, it is easy to say that these that spirits do not rest here. The church's wor- worship hall even has a slave gallery, and who knows what type of evil could have been committed on its grounds. Many call it Southern Bell Ghost, but there are more spirits than there are more spirits that await. <clears throat> within the churches with uh, within the church's grounds it is said that the church is too has mm, it is said that the church and its two graveyards are haunted by a priest from the night from the 1900s his family may even walk these grounds a pledge had a plague have came had came over his family and killed everyone except him he was the last member alive during this time, he began to curse God and started satanic seances and uh, communicating with, sat- uh, with satanic mischief. 
within the church's within within the church's grounds. There is an old shack behind the church that apparently used to be his. Some have saved said they have seen a solid dark figure standing inside the uh, standing inside while the light lights are on. Considering there is no glass in the window on it anymore, and it can be seen e- it can't be seen that e- that easy. The first cemetery apparently just has normal people buried within its grounds, but the graveyard in the back is where all the uh, priests reside. There, that cemetery seems to be uh, covered by thick brush and many plants, trees, and uh, trees to get there to go through. Though some people have said it's said once they have gotten to the far end of the first grave to the uh, gate in the back, they could hear slight talking and whispering coming from within the uh, within those trees. It is also not uncommon for cold spots to show up and temperatures to drop in different spots, more so in the back of the cemetery. Cell phones and cameras also lost battery life here, along with uh, seeing orbs, lights, and overwhelming feeling that something is watching you. You're hearing whispers and even seeing a glimpse of what people say is the priest. Some have even said to see a woman-like figure walking through the cemetery with that seems to be an antelum type in an antelum type dress which looks like it can be from the civil war era through there seems to be an act uh, active spirit which has been seen and it seems to be the uh, lonely spirit of a little boy he appears to be between the ages of six to eight and is often seen near the front of the graveyard near the front gate and is described being very sad and depressed. Some have said to have heard a fake crying sound coming from the gate and by these sounds you can tell that the spirit is in pain and grieving, which may express uh, experience, uh, with my experience at the church. I have noticed my phone and camera batteries being completely drained along with an overwhelming feeling that I was being watched. I know for sure that I have be- that I have seen a figure in the very far back that looked like a man's figure, but once I sh- I shine the lights a bit of light over there the from the flashlight in that direction there was a uh, nothing there it dashed away. I have also heard a fake crying sound. I have yet to see the woman that is claimed to be here, so I cannot say that the, that she is there for sure. I wanted to talk there, talk through. I wanted to walk through to go back to see the gravestones, because I have I have even seen unmarked graves out there. But once I got too close to where the trees, the tree lines, and the path to the back were a very cold chill ran down my spine and cold rush of uh, air brushed against my face it even happened to my friend that went with me at the time as well as we tried that at a different at different times when in fact there was no wind blowing that day and we never got up the courage to go again and i don't blame them all right. I found some more stuff about this place I'm going to read about. Hopefully it's not the same. Ah, okay. Now this one says the story behind these haunted church ruins in South Carolina was seen you Running for the woods. For some, it for some it comes as no surprise that the uh, Parliamento State is a as a haunted, as they say, located along the South Carolina's most haunted roads. 
stands the ruins of a chapel of ease that was built in 1740. The ruins themselves even look haunted, but the stories people tell either... Where do you go? That people tell after visiting seem to confirm it. Plus the old cemetery for the church has its own set of creepy tales. The St. Helen Purchase Chapel of Ease was established within the uh, parish for those people who were too far from the main uh, parish to travel to the uh, distance, that distance to see each other. It opened in 1740 and it burned in 1886, never to be rebuilt again. Currently, it sits right off the main road and an, an eerie reminder to locals of its uh spiritual of its uh spiritual past and haunting haunting pre visitors to the ruins have reported hearing whispering prayers humming being sung and even uh dismantled disbottled voices the odd paranormal activity extends beyond the walls of the old ruins excuse me, into the uh, adjustments of the church. It's here that it's, it's here that so many were, uh, bear, were burned and continue to be burned even after the church burned down. People have atten- uh, admitted feeling cold spots in the heat of the summer. They also report suddenly uh, feeling sick, seeing an uh, seeing an, oca- an occasional apparition of a woman wearing a white dress. Perhaps the most famous haunting in the cemetery is the legendary of Fripp, of the Fripp tomb. Okay, that's pretty much what we've talked about. Okay. Yeah, we've already talked about the tomb. I heard that tomb and all that from the last, from the first one I read. But all right, that sounds good to me, though, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the show today. Hope it wasn't too boring for you. Hope I had some good scary stuff for you. But I appreciate you guys. Like I said, just keep on telling your friends about it. Keep getting me downloads like you're doing and keep helping my show grow. Start giving me some five-star reviews because that'll help start paying the bills. And uh, just give me some good words some say some good stuff on uh, out there for me, guys. Rate my shows. <coughs> I hope you enjoy this because I really enjoy doing it. And I'm so glad I do it now on a Friday because I don't feel as rushed. And I can do it more eased and calm and I don't feel like I get in a rush reading and I'm not. So just want to say thank you guys so much, so much. And uh, we're going to cover some more lakes and stuff next uh, next uh, episode. So be prepared. I'll get some scary stuff. But we'll holler at you guys later. 